the Department of Health and Human Services has put a major university medical center on notice after a Catholic nurse claims she was forced to participate in an abortion against her conscience. The Office for Civil Rights at HHS issued a notice of violation letter last week to the University of Vermont Medical Center after an investigation found a nurse was forced to assist in an elective abortion in 2017. Even though she had made clear to her employer she did not want to, HHS claims this violates federal law and says when the department began investigating this case, it began hearing reports of other medical professionals also scheduled to participate in abortions against their objections. HHS has given the University of Vermont Medical Center, which receives federal dollars, 30 days to change its policies. A spokesperson for the medical center denied the claims and told us in part, quote, we do not discriminate against any employees for exercising their rights to opt out of procedures to which they object. Joining us now from Nashville, Tennessee, is Jordan Seculo, the executive director of the American Center for Law and Justice, the legal firm representing the nurse in this case. Jordan, thank you for being here. Thanks so much for covering this story. Absolutely. First off, Jordan, how had your client expressed to the University of Vermont Medical Center that she was opposed to participating in abortion? So they, they kept a list of people at the hospital, and this is supposed to be normal practice across the country since the law. The law was passed in 1973, the same year the Supreme Court decided Roe versus Wade. A liberal a U.S. senator, a Senator Church, introduced what has been known as the Church Amendment or Church Rule. And it has nothing to do with being, uh, you know, faithful or that just happened to be his last name. But it is what we now call the conscience clause. And what that means is that if you are, a, in this case, a medical provider, so a doctor, a nurse, another kind of medical professional who would be part of a procedure, uh, you can decide not to participate in those procedures which would violate your conscience. And then uh, the hospital keeps a list of those people who uh, have decided uh, they, they opt out of procedures because of conscience objections. So in this case, that this nurse uh, was on this list. And in 2017, uh, she is pulled into a procedure. Mm. She thinks that the procedure is actually an unfortunate situation where there's been a miscarriage and uh, they've got to remove the, the child who, is, who has died. The doctor then turns to her and says, don't hate me. And she learns that this is an elective abortion, that the hospital just uh, that year had begun doing, this was at, at University of Vermont Medical Center, had begun doing uh, what they call elective abortions, so not anything involved with medical necessity. And so she did not know what she was going to be participating in until literally she was already in her scrubs, having to make that decision, the pressure, do I do this, the job. Um, and of course, this caused a lot of distress. Now, the issue has been in the past, okay, so her conscience rights were violated. The law that protects her since 1973 has been violated by this university. What do you do? Well, what we did was we filed a complaint with HHS. And never before, this is interesting, not since 1973 when HHS, that's Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. and uh, Secretary Azar, Alex Azar, who is the, the cabinet secretary who is in charge of HHS now, since they've had this power to enforce the conscience clause for those who are receiving federal funding, like this University of Vermont Medical Center, have never used it. Well, well, the Trump administration did. For the first time, an administration responded to our complaint, uh, did a one-year investigation of the University of Vermont Medical Center, found that not only was our client's conscience rights and thus the federal law violated, but so were four other additional uh, nurses and medical professionals. And it's now HHS has given uh, the hospital 30 days to change their policies or they will not be eligible for federal funding. And Jordan... That, was, that would be about... Yeah. I, I want to speak about this specific case. As your client understood it, what was the medical center's policy if she had refused to participate in this abortion? So she, she didn't think that she would be asked in the first place. That's why she was caught off guard when she entered the, the procedure and the doctor turned to her and said, don't hate me. I mean, that's in the official HHS report. So she was surprised that she was even put in that situation to begin with. But of course, 
because th this hospital had now brought on the elective abortion procedure, uh, she was concerned about that there could be retribution if she had walked out of that procedure and not followed through with it, that she would have lost her job and ultimately uh, her career in nursing. Interesting note, the head of the, the board of trustees for this hospital, when they decided that elective abortions uh, would now be performed at University, University of Vermont Medical Center, is uh, in 2017, the new board chair happened to come from, be the former uh, director of Planned Parenthood for New England. So, I mean, a regional director for the number one abortion provider in the country. So this nurse was very concerned about the specific uh, retribution, but she had a, a government now willing to do something about this, uh, enforce this law. We've now heard from many more medical professionals from across the country who uh, now know that they have a, a administration who will stand up for them, make sure that their wrongs are righted, and that these universities don't get away with this and hospitals and, uh, don't get away with this in the future. And I understand your client is Catholic. How much did her faith yep. influence her opposition to abortion? Well, it's, it's part of the conscience clause. Uh, your faith can absolutely be a reason that you claim that it's, it uh, violates your conscience to perform certain procedures. And the procedures are actually listed out. Uh, if, even University of Vermont Medical Center had what procedures the conscience clause protections covered. And uh, uh, it's not just abortion. There are other procedures as well for other uh, religious groups. So in, in this nurse's case, of course, her Catholic faith uh, informed her conscience. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I think it's directly correlated with her faith. That is what the conscience clause protections are there for. And I'm glad they're now being enforced. Uh, when there's a violation. And unfortunately, we're learning, as is often the case with these cases, there are a lot of violations. People just don't speak up because mm -hmm. they don't want to lose their jobs. What do you see as the next steps for your client? So our client has kind of, uh, I, I think, started a, a wave effect. So we, we just at this uh, hospital center, we've identified four additional clients. So there's be five more uh, uh, for more additional investigations by Health and Human Services. So I believe that she's kind of on the forefront. Mm -hmm. And as, as I said, uh, because you can do these confidentially, uh, so you don't have to disclose who the individuals are when you file the complaint with HHS, HHS can do the investigation and really punish the, the, the medical uh, center. Uh, that's good for our clients. We are hearing from many more. We said, you know what, we need to put out a clarion call and see who else this is happening to and let them know there's something they can do about it now, that there's an administration willing to enforce the existing laws. And that's what we're seeing is that uh, this nurse has really, uh, this Catholic nurse with this objection who had this horrible situation happen to her where she was mm -hmm. forced into performing an abortion procedure or assisting in the abortion procedure. The, what the school statement is, is absurd. They have so far, we've gotten no indication that they have complied with HHS, they may absolutely lose their federal funding. We'll see what they decide to do ultimately. This should never happen again. No religious objector should ever be forced to, to be part of performing an abortion if they have a conscience objection to that. We, that's, it's fundamental to our constitutional law. It's fundamental to American principles of religious liberty and freedom. And it's actually in our U.S. federal code statute says so. Now we have an administration who's given it some teeth. Jordan Seculo, Executive Director of the American Center for Law and Justice, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. And joining us here in our D.C. studio for pro-life analysis is Autumn Christensen, the Policy Director for the Susan B. Anthony List. Autumn, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First off, what is your reaction to this case? Did it surprise you? Well, you know, it's always shocking to hear a story of somebody being forced to participate in the brutal act of abortion. Unfortunately, it's becoming less and less surprising as we hear more and more of these cases. Mm -hmm. um, I think of Kathy DiCarlo, another nurse who several years ago came forward after she was forced to participate in an abortion and put the pieces together of the baby to make sure that the abortion was complete, or the two nurses who tried to get enroll in a program at Vanderbilt and were told, if you don't want to participate in abortion, you're not welcome in this program. There are so many cases of people being pushed out of the medical field or forced to violate their conscience over the issue of abortion. So this is truly a heartbreaking case, unfortunately, in a larger trend. 
Autumn, what should our viewers know about the specific HHS department that caught this case? Yes, the Office of Civil Rights is an important division within the Department of Health and Human Services. One of the things that the Trump administration has done is actually prioritize the issue of conscience rights. There are a number of long-standing laws out there that are intended to protect the rights of individuals who don't want to be involved in abortion, and yet they're being forced to participate and they don't know where to turn. And so under this administration, they have created a division for religious freedom and conscience mm -hmm. so that they can take these cases, look at them closely, and finally enforce the law. And why is religious freedom an issue that pro-lifers should be vigilantly watching and paying attention to? You know, nobody should be forced to participate in abortion. Abortion is a brutal, brutal act. And yet, when we are here, we are in a healthcare crisis where we need more and more healthcare providers. And yet, instead, what we find is that people who get into providing care because they want to help people, because they want to be life-giving, they're finding themselves in circumstances where they're being told you have to participate in taking life in order to carry out your career. That's not something that we should be able to stand for, certainly as pro-lifers, but really just as Americans. Finally, Autumn, as Congress prepares to come back to D.C., what do you want to see from the lawmakers to prevent further cases like this? Yes. Well, we have long supported the Conscience Protection Act, which was authored by Congressman Dr. Andy Harris from Maryland. Uh, we continue to urge co-sponsorship and passage of that important piece of legislation. As Jordan Seculo said in your earlier clip, these laws have been in the books for a long, long time, but no other administration has enforced them thoroughly. The Conscience Protection Act would ensure that these laws are enforceable by providing legal recourse for victims of discrimination. Thank you, Autumn Christensen, Policy Director for the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you for bringing the great insight you always do. Thank you.